Um, because it, it, that's something that I think many people take for granted. Most people walk around and they're comfortable in who they are. And, and it really is a, a, a daunting thought to think that people are walking around and, and, and they're not living their truth and they're in pain. They're scared yeah. to say who they really are on the inside, afraid to, like, if I go out, should I be able to tell somebody I'm trans? Should I not? Should I be able to tell somebody a gay? Should I not? Who, you know, I, I, I sympathize with you. Trust me when I tell you. I, I got to ask you this. Did, did you come from a two-parent household? Two-parent household? Yeah. Um, so not really, because my mom and my dad, they divorced when I was about maybe six years old. Was your dad in your life? Yes, he was in my life. He was in my life. But they divorced at, and when I was very young. So as in the household, it was just my mom and me and my brother. So okay. we, but he, my dad was definitely still around. Um, he was in a he was in a household for for a few of my early years when they were together, and then as after like say six seven, you know it was just me my mom dealing with everything, and I was seeing my dad like on weekends and stuff. So, but um, I think that with my mom being by herself dealing with my situation, it was a lot harder for her being by herself dealing with it. Because my dad didn't really have to, you know, he didn't really have to deal with the steps that I was going through. Um, I just was able to tell him when I was at the point at when I was, I started my transition at like 15. So um, when I got about 17, 18, I kind of got, let my dad know what was going on. And he kind of took it easy. He was like, he took it easier than my mom. So yeah, that's like, where I wanted to go with this is, is how, how was it for your parents? Because be it as, you know, people can say what they want to say, but, and, and we can all, we're human. We can all try to be as accepting as we, uh, uh, you know, would like to be, especially when it comes to our children. But when you have a child, whether you want to admit it or not, whether you think you're accepting or not, you kind of have this idea of who you think this child is going to grow up to be. If it's, a, mm -hmm. if it's a little boy, you think that one day he's going to grow up and, you know, he's going to play all of these different sports and, you know, he'll possibly go on to do great things in the NBA or, or Major League Baseball, what have you. If it's a little girl, you can see her. She's going to be so beautiful and I'm going to be braiding her hair and this, that, and the third. But somebody who is like yourself, and, and, and you're not feeling like I'm born in the right body, as a parent, that's got to be hard. Did, did your parents accept it? Did, did, did your parents, did, for them, were they, yeah. we love you, but we can't accept who you really are? Yeah, so I'm going to go there and try to make it as short as I can. So, yeah, my mom, I wrote a letter to her, and uh, How old? she- How old were you? I was like 14 when I wrote the letter. Okay. So I basically I wrote the letter first of telling her that I what I was sexually attracted to. So basically okay. that letter was me coming out the closet saying that I like boys. Yep. But the whole transition thing happened like right after that, probably like a year later. So she wasn't really she she cried a little bit when I told her in that letter. Because when I came down, she had tears coming from her eyes. She's like, you're only 14 years old. You don't know what's going, you know, she, we use the number, what? A phase. She thought it was just, she's like, this is just going to be a phase. You're only 14. So, okay, whatever you think. I already know how I felt. I said, this ain't going nowhere unless somebody do some voodoo magic on me and just say, you like girls. Boom. But no, that wasn't happening. Um, I uh, can say she took it the hardest. So then when I started getting into my transition, I started growing my hair out. You know, I was very feminine looking already, which I was thankful for. But I just, you know, would get haircuts and people would be a little like, and I used to wear color contacts. So people would say like, 
kind of they couldn't tell. They would say, "What are you?" Like, because people would be mm-hmm. like, "You look like a lesbian or like a, a you know a dyke." Like people used to really think that I was like a girl trying to be a boy. It was weird. So it was like that told me right there that I knew in my heart that I'm a woman. I'm a girl. I need to make start making things happen where I can look the way people are addressing. Stay, stay there for one second. How old were you when you knew? I know at 14, you wrote this letter to your mother. How old were you when you knew something is different about me? I, I, I see all of the, the little boys, they're running, they're playing sports, they're looking at girls. I see all the little girls, they are doing whatever they do and they're looking at boys. I, I, I know in my heart I'm different and this is not a phase for me. I knew that around probably like, I would say probably as early as probably six years old, six, seven years old, very young. Because even before I started liking guys, I just was a feminine person. Like I always wanted to play with the dolls. Never really wanted to play sports like that, but I did because I knew that was what people wanted me to do. So I knew, I would say, I would say I would give myself third grade, fourth grade, that I knew it was something different with me because even when my mom used to kind of like leave out, I would go play in her wigs and put it on my head or put a shirt on my head and make it look like his hair. Like I knew it was very, very something very different about me. And I knew at a young, young age and I never really talked about it that young, but yeah, you can learn you, a person I think can know even younger than that. So, um, so you're not you're not equating this um, in terms of sex. You're you're equating this in terms of I, I just knew I was a girl. Like I just knew Excuse I was a I just knew I was a girl even then. I just knew I was very feminine, and I always wanted to be a girl even at that age because I used to you know see the little Disney shows and movies like The Little Mermaid, and I used to be like, oh my god, I want to be long hair and that's why every time you see me i have inches long hair because this is something as a young child that i always dreamed to have and i always wanted to have that and it shows now in my life you'll never catch me wearing anything longer or shorter i you will never catch me with a bob or short hair, because it's just something that I've always been immune to wanting to have. And everybody, you should do short hair. You should do a a Halle Berry cut. No, I'm not. And I know it may look cute. It might look nice, but I'm still in my phase of long, pretty hair, nice breasts, nice lips, pretty lashes, makeup. Like that was something I dreamed of being even as a child. So it's like now that I'm actually able to fulfill that look now, it's like my dream came true and I'm going to keep doing it the way I want to do it because it makes me feel comfortable. Got you. Um, Before I move this on, I got to ask you, you said you have a brother. Mm -hmm. How did he accept it? He was he's an older he's my older brother. Um, He didn't he didn't take it that good. He did not take it that good at first. No. We were like night and day. We were like night and day. Like it was bad. When I tell you it was bad, it was bad. We used to fight. Oh, MG. But we are like great relationship right now. We are at a great place. I love the fact that I'm able to be like that with him. We have some ups and downs. Now, my brother, you know, he that light skin. He he's a real, real light skin. He's he like Mariah Carey like skin. So he was he was a little full of himself, you know, <laughs> anything that wasn't that wasn't right. Like it was just a bad thing. Like, um, so I think I'm so happy that we're over that hump <laughs> because we hated each other. <laughs> but I could I could imagine I grew up with with a lot of brothers in my household, and I can mm-hmm. only imagine how how it must oh, have been. Oh yeah. Or, and for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and him, he was eight a, years older than me as well. So wow. 
um, and him seeing his little, you know, brother, sister, like the way I was, it was bad for him. I, I, I could only imagine how he really felt because now that I'm at an older place in my life, you know, mature, I kind of try to maybe put myself in his shoes. Like maybe he, he was embarrassed, you know, you never know. It was just something. And I was always the little sister that wanted to be around everybody. Like when he would have his friends come over, I would always oh. try to, I would always try to indulge myself in his friends and I would just be like, you know, yeah, I can be here too. Like, you know, but yeah, he definitely, he, I would say was the last to come around probably. He was the last to come around and to be able to finally accept that. He calls me his sister now. He respects my pronouns. Amazing. My whole family does, which I can honestly say I am blessed because not all trans people have that support. And it's it's bad because when they don't, they go out to the streets and they look for that support from somebody they barely even know. When this is right. first coming from your household, family, your mom, your dad. And when I hear it, sometimes people telling me that I got kicked out the house by their parents, I feel bad for them because it's like, that's who you should be able to be able to have that one at least safe house, that safe haven where you can go and be like, you know, the world is against me right now, but I got my mom, I got my dad, I got my family, my brother, they love me and then I'm good. But some people, they, they need the world for that confirmation. They need the outside world to give them that love that they should get in family. Now that's beautiful. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.